this is Calvin Waite. I trade crypto for a living. I'm not a registered or licensed financial advisor, planner, or broker, so nothing on this channel should be uh, taken as a recommendation to buy or sell. I also trade all of these things, so I probably have a vested interest in there. Um, but there's plenty of enter entertainment value and lots of education, so this will be awesome. For those of you who didn't know, my uh, subscription channel is live. So look at the link in the description over at cryptoinfluencers.com and you can see how I make all of my trades and what I do and what I think about everything. This channel is for uh, more hypothetical and looking at trends and the other one is for actual trading. So you might be interested in that. All right, how's everybody doing today? Uh, we've got a nice, Nice, boring day to follow up our yesterday's boring day. <laughs> so I thought it would be really interesting to kind of take a look at what happens after this drop. Now that we've got enough, some more information, we have a we have a two day drop that amounted to about uh, between the two days, it was about 22, 23%. And then we had this bounce. <clears throat> and this is such an unusual formation that I figured that it would be interesting to go back and look at any other fractals that did this exact same thing. All the other cases in history where we matched a two-day drop that amounted to about 22 or 23 percent with a decent bounce the next day. Because this is sort of the formation that's dictating uh, what will happen next. And um, I know I've, I've been using uh, my AI in a, in a couple of different ways, <clears throat> but the uh, someone was asking me about the fractal patterns and why they're important. And one of the main reasons is that um, there are a thousand different indicators out there in the world, and they all uh, they are all based upon price action, momentum, uh, trends, averages, oversold or under you know overbought. Um, all these things are based upon the movements of the chart. And so in, in a rational world, a chart behaving a certain way would trigger the same rational response if people are looking at things the same way, especially in aggregate. And so that's where um, I think there's a lot of value in kind of skipping over all of the uh, intricacies of this little indicator and that little indicator. They can help inform things, but really um, I'm kind of more results driven and I kind of look at all right, we, we've done something like this, and how did traders react in the past, and what can we expect um, them to do if they were to, to act similarly in the future? So I think there's a lot of value there. All right, so let's, let's just take a look. Uh, what I did is I backed up my, my AI <clears throat> to just look at this three-day pattern. So I'm not looking at five days back or eight days back or 55 days back. I'm looking at these three candles. And then what happened um, after that? So you can see that um, our, our variance column on three candles, if we're 4% off, that means that the, the low, the low and the high they differed from our from our experience by about one and a third percent per day. So on a 20% drop, this is actually pretty, pretty precise. Now when we get down to here, uh, the variance is about 11% and the information gets a little bit more fuzzy because out of three data points, you're missing each data point by about three or four <laughs> percent. And that's, <clears throat> that's a pretty significant variance. So um, the most, the, the first ones we look at are the most, uh, probably the, the, the greatest accuracy. Like this is what we could probably look at and expect a similar behavior. But this is based on three bars again. So we're not really looking at where we've come from. So we kind of have to take a little bit of this with a grain of salt for that reason as, as well. But our most likely scenario <clears throat> is after this that we move upwards. Well, this is not the the current experience that we have seen because we we had this drop this bounce and now we've retreated and we've created this uh, wedge right here so uh, let's keep going and see if there's another one that matches a little bit closer 
<clears throat> so here's one where we had two days of a drop and a move. Uh, we immediately bounced and kind of fell again and established a slightly lower low, and then we kind of moved on from there. So that one's that one's informative, but may not be perfect either. Uh, by now, our variances are getting a little bit wild, but um, this one had a had a pretty good tail on it, and then um, uh, we didn't quite. We didn't quite find a wedge, but we, we you can kind of see that the uh, the bleeding had sort of stopped. There was a lot more, a uh, little bit more sideways. This is our most recent occurrence. This is the well, 2021 May. Um, let's take a look at this one. So, this one we had a bounce, and it, and the next day we had another move. So you can see how hard it is to find in the history of Bitcoin us doing anything similar. Um, this one might be a little closer because at least we had some down days following, but um, obviously not perfect. And then there's uh, this one. This one happened at the top of a major run up though. So this one doesn't quite match it very perfectly. And um, this one might be a little closer. So big, big um, drop, drop. This candle's a little odd. <laughs> so this is 2012 when we're trading for $5. But we kind of did get a little bit of a sideways consolidation, but nothing big. Our consolidation right now is um, over a week old now. So it's kind of uh, interesting. All right, we're gonna go to these less accurate results. And you can see here, uh, we we did a little bit of fighting back and forth. What we've not yet seen is a, a strong move to the upside after this. So we're still looking for that. Um, this one might be as close as we get. So I'm going to come back to this one. Um, but here, here we had one more day that we dropped completely off. So this one isn't quite a very good match. This one's probably our closest um, from a, a chart standpoint. Uh, we we're definitely not coming into a move upwards though. So, but from a from a standpoint, let's let's actually go to um, November twelfth of twenty fifteen. November twelfth of twenty So this is the this is the candle formation that we are seeing. <clears throat> it, it may be as close as we're gonna get. <laughs> it may not be pretty or even perfect or or even close, but at least it gives us something. Here we had a bullish engulfing, which is a little different. Um, but we did have three days of down. We had two days of up, and then we had a little bit of of, of down to consolidate. But we are. This definitely created a bit of a wedge. So this, this formation is probably as close as we're going to get if we ignore everything before <laughs> and just look at this three-day um, this three-day formation and the structure after. So um, this is this is probably as close as we're going to get. And you can see that we did do a, quite a few more days of consolidation. There was a, a one more fallout. But um, on the whole, we really didn't move too far. About five or six more days of sideways before the market decided to make a move. In our case, we can't predict that it'll be up or down. <clears throat> I have a strong hunch that our next move has to be up because, as I mentioned before, we have our swing low candle, but we don't have a swing high candle. Um, this is the, yeah, we don't have anything that we could point to for a swing high. And so the the logical next move was that we'd establish some sort of a swing high and then we'd kind of figure it out from here, but um, this is exactly what we're doing. We've, we've dropped, we bounced nice and hard, we've fallen back down, created a, a bit of a wedge, and what can we expect? I don't know. It, it could be f a few more days of sideways consolidation, but um, my my expectation, especially from the news that's come out, is that I think a lot of the drama and fear has kind of washed its way through. Um, there's not a lot of uh, really strong selling. Um, if I go back to, um, let's see, I'm gonna add volume just really quick. Um, yeah, 
you know what, I'm gonna have to go to the total market cap. I, I, I've noticed that the, the high volume spikes on KuCoin are certainly not representative. <laughs> so if I go to everything, our volume has tapered down a bit. And we're just kind of, yeah, without, without high volume and without high emotion, there's not a lot going on. So I wouldn't expect a huge difference. So um, this is kind of where we're at. We, we're definitely in a consolidation phase. Um, it should likely last for a while, but um, I think that our next move will, will break us up or down. Either way, we're printing a lot of indecision candles. We have um, this, we've, we've got kind of a bullish uh, doji, and now we've got a bearish doji. And the last time we saw back-to-back -back bullish and bearish um, was back in this range. We were having we were having this all over the place. This this here is reminiscent, and also um, this move where we had a long tail and um, a, a sharp rejection. But these are these are these are pretty significant candle bodies. Same here. So. Um, we're reading this the best we can, but really, um, this is sort of a no trade zone. We're waiting for uh, the market to dictate a little bit more information before we have direction. So that's where we are. We're hunkering down, waiting for things to move on from here. But uh, uh, we'll we'll watch and and see if anything breaks out. Um, from the alt standpoint, uh, MIR had a pretty decent bounce today. Um, certainly not enough to get us back to where we were, but certainly a good step. Uh, Apes had an okay day. A lot of the alts look like this though. They're doing the sideways consolidation and they are starting to get a little impatient. So I'm, I'm expecting this to, to happen a lot more on the alts. Um, the other one that moved a lot was Algo and Chili's. So Chili's is one that we're actively long in, in the, um, pro channel. So <clears throat> anyway, very cool. Uh, I have a, a couple of, of interesting meetings happening and I'll, I've got some maybe an, uh, some announcements that'll probably come out end of next week. So I'll uh, keep you apprised of that. Um, the last thing I was going to say is that uh, I really liked Wednesday's live. I think we'll probably do uh, a live Wednesday every Wednesday. I think that'll be pretty cool. So Wednesday at 1215 Mountain Time is pretty perfect for my schedule. So I will try to do a lunchtime live uh, live show every week and we'll see how it goes from there. All right, you guys, I will see you uh, tomorrow. Actually, I'm not sure about tomorrow. Um, I probably will get back uh, Monday. So thanks for making it to the end of my video. Uh, make sure you keep those trades small. Uh, don't force a trade. Don't get impatient. And uh, if you want to see how all this works, please come over and check me out on the subscription channel at CryptoInfluencers.com. Again, the link is in the description.